Let's take a look at the neocons. I refer to them as the neo-Nazis. The majority, the vast majority of the Bush administration is not made up of Christians, but those who have Jewish names. But are these really Jews, or are these Zion Nazis who do not believe in Jesus Christ, but maybe following another path and looking at another Lord, the Lord Lucifer? A very good book to read on the subject. One is by a Jewish American named Jack Bernstein, entitled "The Life of an American Jew in Racist Marxist Israel." And then one other that explains this rather well is a book by Michael Collins Piper, "The Judas Goats." It's a pretty thorough expose of the neocons. There is a pastor of a large evangelical church. He has a huge following, um, Pastor John Hagee down in San Antonio, Texas, and he is calling for war in Iran right now. Well, the Judas goats lead the flock and congregations to the slaughter. Turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 3, as today we begin a new series of sermons titled the feud between two families with the message today World War III has begun. I know that Americans don't like to think about this but it's imperative that we now look through the fog created by political correctness and to admit the obvious we are at war. I'm going to give you the justification that World War III has begun. He wants the United States to attack Iran right now and you know I say to Pastor Hagee you know what? You got some weight to lose. Um, you know, if you if you want war with Iran, knock yourself out. You be the first to go over there and get get a body part blown off. You know, that's fine with me. If that's your position, but you know, but why are you preaching that from your pulpit and getting innocent? You know, 18 year old children. My husband got blown up in Vietnam. I'm a registered nurse. I know what war does. I've seen it. I've worked at veterans hospitals. You know, I I know what hell war can create. And, you know, for him to stand up there and preach that, hey, you know, if you want to do that, you be the first to go. You go, you lead by example. You don't get innocent, you know, 18-year-old kids to go over there and do your work for you. Preachers and priests are preaching the Judas goat gospel. These apostate priests and ministers, evangelicals, Catholics, they're really the Judas goats. I would say that the neocons, the ones who are holding the reins of power, are more like the shepherds in sheep's clothing, the Wait, wolves I, I, in are sheep's you clothing. Are you talking about the Fabian socialists who exactly, uh, yeah. are wolves with sheep's clothing? Exactly, yeah. It's part of the iconography of a stained glass window for the Fabian socialist society, the wolf in sheep's clothing. Isaiah warns that the, the wolf shall lie down with the lamb and you know i think that christians are looking straight at the wolf and they they can't see him because he's dressed in sheep's clothing such as people like john macarthur the neocons are really the controllers and then you have the ministers and the the pastors the priests some bishops that are really the judas goats that lead the rest of the sheep into the slaughterhouse but they're under the control of the neocons i mean they voluntarily allowed themselves to be co-opted because politics is religion now so Th talking, this is the problem we're talking about the neo nazi mm -hmm. co-option of the christian conservative right that's right that's exactly right yeah an authentic conservative christian or catholic is basically marginalized. They're basically tuned out by the neocon Christians and Catholics. Basically they're uninvited and ostracized. I think if, if Satan were to appoint an ambassador to communicate with this world, his name would be Henry Kissinger and that's the man that George Walker Bush, who was in the skull and bones, born again into the satanic order in 1968, mm -hmm. that's the man that he picked to oversee the 9-11 Keene Hamilton Commission. It's the same Henry Kissinger who transferred all the, the Nazi nuclear and other technologies to the U.S. government as soon as World War II was over. And uh, he was ensconced at Harvard as a faculty member where David Rockefeller recruited him. Well, now, wasn't his code name Bohr when he worked for Odra, which was the uh, Polish equivalent of the KGB, and their sister organization? 
in Poland? Henry Kissinger is a very, very dirty character, and he is the greatest war criminal in the world today. Military men are dumb, stupid animals to be used as pawns for foreign policy. As far as I know, he married into to the uh, Rockefeller family. I've heard him described as a triple agent and by a very knowledgeable source. And interestingly enough, one of the agendas that Kissinger fostered was called the Kissinger Report, the NSSM 200, which authorized a eugenics program financed by American taxpayer money and signed by Richard Nixon to depopulate as many as 15 third world countries as a matter of strategic necessity that it was necessary for the United States to depopulate these third world countries in order to maintain its hold on their natural resources and to use eugenics as the means to do it and by eugenics I mean abortion sterilization contraception etc and thereby the corporations would maintain their hold uh, financially and materially on these poor countries. I'm an independent radiation scientist. I've worked in two nuclear weapons labs and I've traveled around 46 countries informing the public about the horrific effects of nuclear technologies. And if we don't stop them, there will be no future for humanity. They're being used right now to depopulate the world by two to four billion people. This is Henry Kissinger's Global 2000 Report, a national security policy paper that he wrote for President Jimmy Carter in 1979. The first President Bush was the first ambassador to Communist China. Before that, he was in the Central Intelligence Agency, head of it. They have a mandatory abortion program, and yet he seems to give away the entire store, our, our secrets. It's a no-brainer. Trade yeah. deficits uh, that, that have occurred are staggering. Obviously, there's a globalist agenda at work, a hidden agenda that Americans don't seem to recognize or want Catholic, to acknowledge. How do the Catholic congregations buy this? And when I saw they don't pay any attention to it at all, most I, of them. I, I see him at the, at, the, at the prayer breakfast. They don't want to. This, to me, is, is staggering that we would be seeing the Catholics and the Protestants supporting a man mm -hmm. who supports an agenda that's laid out by the, uh, the Club of Rome, and they're talking about yeah. eliminating 80%, four out of five of the people living on the, on the planet Earth. How does this fall into a mood of acceptance within the Catholic Church? It could very well be a lack of faith. Can that be infiltration like you talked oh, about? Oh, absolutely. It's definitely coordinated on the inside. There's no doubt about that. And then it's maintained through media, through Catholic media, to keep the show running. Is the Catholic media as bad as the Protestant evangelicals? I can't imagine. They have it. different styles, but it's just as bad as far as I'm concerned. Robertson, Fallenwell, uh, what is it, Hagee? There's a bunch of them. I mean, Hal Lindsey, Jack Van Empey, but it can't, take your pick. But, but, it's a different kind of poison. Whether you, you're given strychnine or arsenic or cyanide, it's all going to kill you. How do you wake up the Catholic clergy, and in turn, how do you wake up the Catholic congregations? God only knows. You mentioned Michael Collins Piper's book, The Judas Goats, and we hear about the Judas Goat gospel. I mean, this is becoming a subject, a topic of conversation all across America. How good is The Judas Goats by Michael Piper? There's quite a few of the neocons that are mentioned and discussed, uh, backgrounds, tactics, what positions they hold in government and uh, finance with well, corporations. These are ringers on the right. They are counterfeit conservatives. We see these prostitute preachers, and mm. I have to call them that, leading the flock to the slaughter, leading members of their congregations into the military to go out and fight the Iraqis and 650,000 innocent men, women, and children have died mm -hmm. and there was no cause for that war mm -hmm. other than one that was created by Bush. 